This video is on how to remove and reinstall the drive shaft on a 2002 Mustang GT. As you can see, the car is already on jack stands and the front wheels are chocked. One other thing to note, if you haven't drained your transmission fluid, you only want to jack the rear of your car because that way the tail shaft of your transmission will be higher than the fluid level in your transmission. So you won't lose any oil and even more importantly you won't have a big oil spill in your driveway let me take you to the back of the car as you can see the car is securely supported by the jack stands now the only reason the jack is still in place is because i wanted to show that the ham of the differential is a good jacking point because you can jack the entire rear of the car in one shot the only thing you have to be concerned with is that the saddle of the jack is securely on the ham and not in contact with the differential cover. Now one other word of caution, a lot of guys will leave all the weight on the jack and just place the jack stands underneath as a safety. The bad thing about that is when you're working on the car, you might kick one of the jack stands out of location and then as Murphy's Law will have it, the jack fails and then you're liable to get injured or crushed. Now that's enough about safety let's move on to the job. The first step is to remove these four bolts that connect the drive shaft flange to the differential flange. These bolts have 12 millimeter 12 point heads so they will require a 12 millimeter 12 point socket. Before you remove the bolts, make sure you put a witness mark on the drive shaft flange and the pinion flange. That way, when you reinstall it, you'll put it back in the same clock position and maintain the existing balance between the drive shaft and the differential. Here you can see my witness marks. I just used a cordless drill and a 116 spit. It gives you a clearer mark than a center punch or an awl. The easiest way to remove these bolts is with an impact wrench, but you can do it with a breaker bar. You just have to keep the drive shaft from rotating. You could achieve that by sticking a large screwdriver between the two yokes, but you'd run the risk of damaging the U-joint spider or more likely damaging the seals of the bearing caps. So you'd be better off making up a tool to hold the drive shaft stationary, which basically amounts to taking a piece of quarter inch or 3 16 flat stock and drilling two 9 16 holes two and a half inches apart close to the edge like this. Here I drew a quick sketch of the fabrication drawing for this tool in case you want to make it. Now even if you use an impact wrench to remove the bolts you're still going to need this tool or something like it to reinstall your drive shaft because you're going to have to use a torque wrench to properly torque the bolts down to 83 foot-pounds. Getting back to the job, since I have an impact wrench, I'll use that to remove the bolts. If you use two extensions, they will allow you some wiggle, yet won't rob torque as a U-joint adapter would. Uh, also, the extensions bring the impact wrench back far enough to clear the drive shaft, since the drive shaft is at an angle to the flanges. Alright, enough room to get the impact wrench out. Make sure your socket's on there squarely and... I'll just fast forward the video as I remove the remaining three bolts. Now, it's always good practice to remove the bolts in a crisscross pattern, but probably not that critical in a flange this thick with such a close bolt pattern. Now that the flanges are separated, you can remove the drive shaft. Let me relocate the camera for that. Here we are at the front of the drive shaft, looking at the slide yoke and the tail shaft housing. All you have to do is pull the slide yoke out of the tail shaft housing without damaging the seal. Here you can see, oops, maybe if I can get the camera in a position that we can see, there's my uh, 
new joint. You can see it sliding right out. I don't want to do it one-handed because you don't want to damage the lip seal. So you want to support that yoke in there as you're extracting it so you don't damage your seal. You see that rubber seal? That's the outer point part. That one's not as critical. It's just for dust. The inner portion of that seal is the critical part. Can't see it, but trick is there or, or the caution there is just to make sure you just pull that shaft out straight. So, whether it comes out, I'm going to lay the camera right on the ground. I don't know if it's going to show up or not, but here we go. So I'm holding that shaft, keeping it square, and pulling out. You hear that seal? You might have heard that air release. Uh, that was a good thing. I meant I had a good seal. Okay. There you go. Okay, you can see the tail shaft of the transmission. There is your yoke with the shaft that goes into the transmission. It's a spline shaft. It uh, has a bore in there, a splined bore, and it slides on that spline shaft that you can see right there. There is your drive shaft. You can see I have one end of the drive shaft resting on the ground. Goes over that H pipe. It's not in the way. You don't have to take the H pipe out. It's just the only thing is when you remove it, make sure you use caution. If you want, you can wrap a rag around that. You don't want to see that, that shaft there. That's the thing. You don't want to scratch it or damage it in any way because if you do, you take a chance of having an oil leak. So use extra caution when you're taking the drive shaft out not to let that scrape against anything. And that's what I'll do next is just take, just take the drive shaft out from the car. Piece of cake, really. Again, like I said, it was just those four bolts at that flange at the end that held it in. That was it. Once you unscrew those, it just slipped right out. All that's left to do to complete the removal of the drive shaft is to pull the drive shaft out from under the car, being extra careful not to scratch or damage the slide shaft in any way. All right, so I'm just going to crawl under there. I don't know how good that image will be, but I don't know how much you'll be able to see. But I'll crawl underneath. <coughs> and I'm going to put my hand right on the uh, you can't see it because it's up and up inside the uh, tunnel, frame tunnel I keep my hand at all times on that uh, shaft and there you go I'm out I'm clear I have some uh, plywood right here so it's okay, I can let that shaft Sit on that plywood, it won't harm it. And the uh, entire drive shaft is removed from the car. Once you removed your drive shaft, inspect the slide shaft of the slip yoke for any major wear, scratches, or scoring. Minor scratches and scoring can be removed with 400 grit sandpaper. All right, there you can see it. Now, you know, I mean, that does show some scuffing a little bit. But actually, if you run your fingernail across, if you don't catch anywhere, it's, you know, you're pretty good. I mean, you could mic it up, but again, if you don't feel any kind of a groove when you run your, uh, if it doesn't catch, uh, you know, you're good. And also, a, a more critical thing would be a concentric scoring going around the shaft wouldn't it be as bad as a straight score? That would, you know, and that, and that wouldn't happen in a normal operation. That, that would happen if you damaged it somehow in removal. That would be, you know, that would be a problem. It would definitely cause a leak. But even a concentric score, if it's deep enough, will certainly cause a leak because that's probably where the seal was riding and um, uh, it would have worn in. So you, you would have to replace this part of the uh, drive shaft. In this case, the slide shaft only has minor scoring and scuffing. So I'll just clean it up with 400 grit sandpaper before I reinstall it. After you've completed whatever task it was that required you to remove the drive shaft, and in my case it was to replace the U-joints, the last step before installing the drive shaft should be to clean up the slide shaft with 400 grit sandpaper. Now, it doesn't take very long to do. It only took about three or four minutes. 
I just fast forwarded it because it's kind of boring to watch and it makes the video about three minutes shorter. Okay, that orange as they actually actually kind of removed, got rid of the uh, uh, polyurethane that was clogging that sandpit. Um, so. Uh, that that brown you see is I sanded a little bit into the area that was exposed that had some rust on it. Not a problem. Matter of fact, just a little dirty paper towel here. I'm gonna, you know, you can see there you go. Um, so I'm nice, you know, nice and smooth. Uh, it did it. I didn't lose any tolerances there. Now I'll take uh, some. Uh, case I got any any you know obviously I used a dirty paper towel there but um, not a problem I'll spray it with this uh, brake cleaner and then I'll go get a clean paper towel and wipe it off and that should be good okay I'll give it another spritz I'm going to get the towel ready because what I want to do while it's still wet, the stuff dries fast. Just wipe it off with a clean paper towel. So give another spritz. And then wipe it down with a clean paper towel. That's ready to go back in. But one last step. While I'm jockeying into position, I don't want to work. I have to be too worried. I'll still be, still use caution, but I'm gonna wrap a rag around the end of it, a clean rag. There you go. So now I don't have to worry about getting it dirty, getting any crap on it, or uh, scratching it as I'm feeding it over the H pipe. So let's finish the job. Take this outside. Take it to the car. All right. Before I put the dry shaft in, I'm going to just clean off that flange, the mating flange. I already uh, cleaned it off with the Scotch Brite. I'm just going to. Give it a rinse with uh, uh, brake parts cleaner. Especially, I want to pay attention to the threads. Clean those, and then blow it off with air. The reason why you want to make sure it's fairly clean, especially the threads is you want to put lock night lock tight on the bolts now ford says to replace the uh to use new bolts but it says if you use the old bolts over again to put lock tight on them i think the reason why they want to use new bolts is because they come with lock tight um so it's a saving the step of applying applying lock tight to the old bolts so use new bolts or put lock tight uh, and reuse put Loctite on your old bolts and reuse them. All right, next step now, I'm gonna get the jack out of the way because uh, I'm on jack stands and it's gonna make it easier for me if the jack's not in my way. Drive jack is ready to go in.
feed it over the H pipe. And then move the camera. Okay, I got the camera in a better position. So you can see the rear end. I got my bolts. And some nevices. I'm going to put nevices not on the bolts, but on the uh, flange. Uh, a very thin coat of nevices on the mating surface. Cleaned off my bolts. I basically uh, chased the threads of these bolts with a uh, die. Uh, whether you can see it or not, I don't know. Chase them so they're clean. And you know, uh, uh, blue, uh, blew them off with air. So now I'm going to put some nevices on the flange of the uh, that's on the drive shaft because this flange. Is smaller than the flange that's on the rear end, so that way I don't put nevices where I don't need it if I put it on this flange. Okay, very thin coat of nevices. Matter of fact, even with the brush, it goes on a little too thick, so. Take a paper towel and hold on your finger like that and kind of just smear that to make a very thin layer of nevices on the flange. No point in making it too thick because it's all going to squeeze out anyway, except for a very small amount. So make it as thin as you can. Okay. Now I'm ready to uh, put the flange in. First, I'm going to put it in just by with the bolts without any uh, Loctite. Uh, that will be to get the uh, uh, everything lined up and, and in its proper position. And then I'll unscrew them one at a time, and then uh, wrench them down to a preliminary torque one at a time you know uh, with Loctite on them and then I'll go over them with a torque wrench so first step is just to put them in to get everything in place so let me scroll underneath here then again it's a little tight but it's doable also the witness mark I told you about before gotta make sure that I find that here Here it is. Then I gotta find it on my drive shaft. Here it is. And obviously, you wanna make sure that your transmission was in neutral, otherwise it would be harder to turn that, very hard to turn the drive shaft. Okay, so now I'm going to get a 3 8 ratchet with an extension and a 12 millimeter socket and I'll tighten down the first one to a like as tight as I can get it with a 3 8 ratchet. 3 8 ratchet with a 12 millimeter socket. Right here, and a couple of extensions, so then whatever I need, and get that half inch out of the way. Okay, now get underneath it, get in position, and I'll put Loctite on this fourth bolt, and I'm going to tighten this one down, tight as I can get it, with the three eighths. Uh, oops, 
but it's not coming up right. There we go. So I'll put some Loctite on here. I don't know if you see it, but whatever. I'm putting, I'm, I'm, trust me, I'm applying Loctite, blue Loctite on the boat. A generous amount. And let's go that in there. Okay, I take my ratchet. Now, I can't get it very tight. I mean, if I hold the wheel. But, it's not. It's about all you can do. Everything's moving. I have a solution for that when I go to talk it. Right now, we're just setting them in, in position. All right, now I have both all my bolts on. Uh, they're just on their snug. Now, I have a piece of 3 8 a 3 16 inch thick steel right here. That I drilled two holes, two and a half inches apart, nine sixteenths of an inch in diameter, and about a sixteenth inch away from the edge of the steel. So hopefully I can fit them over, but the plan was to fit them over the bolts, I don't know if I can. I can. And now I fit them over the bolts, but I don't seem to be able to get my, <laughs> I might have to jack the car up higher so I can get my uh, wrench on there, unless it fits over there. Let's see if it fits over there, my socket. Well, it kind of fits, but what, really, instead of jacking the car up higher, I'm gonna cut this piece of steel down. Um, so, uh, that solves my problem. And then I'll be able to torque these down. But uh, basically, I'll do the first one because I, I think I can reach it. This is the torque wrench. We'll need a longer so uh, extension. It's got to be torqued down to 83 foot pounds. So I'll do that one first. Not in a good position to do it, but let's see. Okay, that one's done. Let's 
see if I can get the one over here. Probably not without rotating it. I gotta rotate it. So let's do the opposite side. Okay, but you can see yeah, that's the thing. I'm gonna cut this down a little bit. Uh, but you know, you make something like this, fits over the heads of the bolts, allows you to hold this from spinning. Uh, so you can put your uh, 83 foot pounds of torque on each of the bolts. And once you've done that, job is done.